So this is one thing that gives me much concern each time I see the British people do it here. This is basically how they wash their dishes. They wash like this and they use the napkin to dry it out properly. They don't rinse. So I am wondering the concept of this. I don't know. I think I would suggest it's better they go on washing in the dishwashers rather than having to wash and they wouldn't rinse it. I, I, I doubt this is really hygienic if you ask me please leave a comment in the comment section and let me know why they do this because it's truly really weird all right you are most welcome to chief space my name is chi yere and i currently base here in the uk yes in this video i'll be talking about most of the things i found unusual here in the uk um that's the unusual lifestyle you know the culture shock i experienced living here in the UK. So please, if you are new to my channel, do me a favor, a special favor. It's a kind gesture by subscribing to my channel and staying connected. And thank you to my old subscribers. That's my returning subscribers. I really appreciate you ever coming around to watch my content. So some of this cultural shock that I've experienced here in the UK, one of them is there is their English language here. You know, UK is absolutely an English speaking country. Yes, it's an English speaking country. Everyone knows that. But coming to the UK, their English accent, it varies. It's quite deep that they speak through their nostrils. <laughs> They speak as shepre, shepre, shepre. If you do not scare this, you might be looking at someone speaking and you wouldn't really grasp what that person is talking about. Funny enough, you also speak or you also understand that speak English and you'll be asking yourself, is this the same English that I speak that this person is speaking? Another strange thing regarding this, their English um, speaking accent is that most of the areas in the uk they have their different accents people from middlesbrough they have their accent people from liverpool manchester all the areas i think london is clearer over there like they said you know here somebody is talking to you somebody wants to say my mother instead of saying my mother or my mom the person will be like me mom me sister me brother they don't open their mouth to speak this english <laughs> and another strange thing is this most of them cannot speak proper English. I am telling you, they miss their tenses. They do the cut and join, and they can't really write English perfectly well when it comes to written English. At schools, I've seen a lot of them. They can't write properly, despite that they are originally English-speaking people. Secondly, is when you alight from a bus, and the passengers, everybody is saying, thank you, thank you, me too, I say thank you. <laughs> I've been used to that. Even when I travel back to my country, Nigeria, I've, I, I started saying thank you to drivers. I know my brother was like, why do you always say that? But you paid to get on the bus, so why say thank you? I said, sorry, I don't know. I don't always know when I say that because I've been used to that, you know. Number three, here in the UK, people drink tap water. Water from the tap, you know. In my country where I come from, we don't drink tap water because we do not trust the water source and all that stuff. Some of them are not properly treated. But here, everybody drinks tap water, even at work. I see my work colleagues, my manager. Even I, I had to call someone to confirm what they drink. I ran three or four people before we started drinking tap water here. You know, but there are varieties of waters here. Yeah, they have the spring water, they have the sparkling water if you're buying from the shop. And sometimes you might be out in the shop or in the mall here yeah, in the city center you know and you are texting you go into the shop to buy water you might think that that's a plain water unfortunately when you test it it's sweet it's a sweetened bottled water you know <laughs> it's very tasty you know so that's really strange having a sweetened sweetened water those things do not exist in my country. Yeah, another point is this. You have to pay for bags. You know, the nylon, when you go shopping in the shops, they don't give you bags for free here. Yes, I was really surprised at that because when I was in the UK, that was around nine years ago, I didn't have to do that. Though when I asked, I was told that they recently introduced that. That was around five years ago. When you buy whatever, toothpick, bread, if you're asking for a bag, you have to pay for it. You pay 10p, 20p to get a bag, to pack the things you buy. And I think it's really a nice behavior because it helps them to, it helps people to recycle. You know, when you are going shopping, you go with your bags 
no matter the number of um, items you are buying, you can go with as much number of bags as it could contain the items you are buying from the shop. So it's really a um, shock to me because it doesn't happen in my country and it's new to me. Yes, I know in Saudi Arabia where I had come from to this country, it's, in fact, you can ask them for three, four to double the bag and they will definitely do without complaining. Yeah, so now another shocking thing is this, the public display of affection in this country. People kiss on the streets without apology. People, they on the buses, on the train, adults, children, teenagers, everywhere. They don't even care if kids are watching because they do that before their children. Everywhere is a they hug, they cry. Oh my God, in my country, you have to hide to do such things. You hardly see your parents hugging each other. <laughs> yes, you hardly see parents hugging or you talk more of mom. <laughs> it's not allowed in, in Nigeria where I come from. People do those things in their private places, not in public. So it's really weird to me seeing people do such things here. And another point is dogs having to walk on the streets. Everyone owns a dog, puppy. Some, some of them, in fact, some people own lion in form of dogs, here, huge dogs. You know, everyone has one or two pets and these dogs and cats they are giving this priority treatment more than human beings if you ask me because they have their rooms they have their beds they have their duvet covers oh my goodness they talk about it as if mm, let me not go on with that but it's strange to me anyway because it's not like that in my country. Um, another point is this, automated card payment system in this country. You could just buy something from the shop. All you need is just swap your card. It takes the money. You don't have to put your PIN. You don't have to put your passcode. Just even on the buses here, just do your card like this. Piam, it takes out the money. You know, at the point I was afraid, I was like, will scammers get someone's card and start using it? But I was told that there is a limit of 30 pounds. The limit you can spend with that card. Is 30 pounds so anything above 30 pounds they will just alert the owner of the card yes and it's really fantastic it saves a lot of time and stress of having to remember your code and you know so it's good anyway but it's a shock to me i don't think that thing or such would be effective where i am coming from uh another shocking thing is to have found out that there are no snow in certain places in in the uk yes because I am looking forward to having a, to experiencing white Christmas in this country. And I've asked my work colleague, they were like, no, that this part, they don't experience snow, that sometimes it takes two years or three years for them to have snow. I remember when I was in Bolton, close to Manchester, mostly every year there's snow. And I'm looking forward to showing my son, as in to getting him through the window to say, the snow is falling, coming out to build them snowman, snowball. But I don't know. I hope it's happened. it happens because Christmas is just around the corner. Yeah, so here, trailers of buses do not emit black smoke. Yes, you don't see trailers and cars, you know, bringing out black smoke while driving on the street. Those things, I think they are prohibited by law. If your car is faulty, you go and fix it. You don't spread some um, unwanted carbon dioxide to people, causing them to inhale some rubbish air. It's not allowed in this country. And it's such a beautiful thing. Another point is this. Walking and riding a bicycle does not determine who is poor in this very country. Rich people here, they prefer walking. Yes, a lot of people, they walk a lot. They have their bicycles. They can walk to school. I walked to my child's school yesterday, you know, with the help of my neighbor here. They have a car, but she's always walking her little one to school. My neighbor is also British. This morning he was, he has a car, he's packed there. In fact, he walked his two kids to school this morning. It's about 10 minutes away. It's someone that has a car. So here, walking is a lifestyle here. And I love it because it's a way of exercising. I cherish it when I also walk. But it's also shocking because in Nigeria, you know now, car is a big deal. Yes, anyone that has a car is a rich man, tick madam. And every morning they like they would definitely like to take their children to school in their cars, showing that they belong, you know, they are high class. But it doesn't exist here. You don't know who is who in this very country. It's quite shocking. 
All right, so another shocking culture I've also experienced here is that saying sorry is totally strange to the people here. When someone trips before you and you say sorry, the person will say, oh, no, 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 it's not your fault, you know. But in my country, we say sorry because the person has fallen or the person has dropped something, even though it's not our fault. It's, it's a kind of it's empathy or sympathy, you know. But here, they tell you straight, it's not your fault. You will see a child that fall. Param, nobody is saying sorry to the child. The parents will just keep moving. The next thing, they will help the child up. They will help the, the adult. They will help the person up. Nobody says sorry here because they believe that it's not your fault. So it's quite strange to me, you know. So another culture shock I've also experienced here is that managers, they come to work first. Where I work, morning shifts start by half seven. That's 7.30 a.m. in the morning. But as early as 6.30, the managers, they are on ground. Yes. How did I know? I've done, what is it called? Night shift. So I've had to see them come to work very early. And when I, when I do afternoon shift that start 2.30, they come in around half one. Instead of coming in that same 2.30, they come in around half one, that's 1.30. So it's quite strange to me, to be frank. In, in my country, managers, they come last. Sometimes they wouldn't even come. They would be operating from the phone or their homes. They are the ogre. And these managers here, they serve us, you know, the staff. Sometimes if they did not tell you that this is the manager, you honestly wouldn't know that this is the manager, this is a supervisor. Because, oh my goodness, you will see them offering to make you a cup of tea. You will see them helping you to serve you lunch, to serve you dinner. Sometimes, one of the managers, oh Steve, yes, forgive me that I call his name. He was doing dishes the other day at work. A manager dishes, as in washing dishes that I used to eat. It's quite a strange thing. It doesn't happen in my country. What is this? Yeah. Beggars are so polite in this country. Yes, I know it will surprise you that beggars exist in the UK. They exist in the UK, but they are very polite. They come to you, they ask you, excuse me, can you spare us some few um, quids? And you'll be like, sorry, I haven't got none of me. They'll be like, all right, that's fine. Thank you. And they walk away. Huh. Who says thank you for not giving the money in my country? Nobody does that. Instead, they'll be looking down on you somehow that you're me. And blah, blah, blah. So these are some of the things I found strange in this part of the world. I think I've also mentioned that titles are nothing to be right home about in this country. Nobody cares about your title. Um, even if you have all the degrees, they address you by your first name. Chinyere, Joseph, John, Catherine, Lucy. You know, nobody cares. In class, you don't have to raise up your hand to answer questions in this country. No. When you have any question to ask, you just call the person. My class tutor then, Karen, she was in her 75-year-old, as a 2010, that I studied, in, that I came studying in this country, or that I came to study in this country. In class, you'll be like, everybody will be like, Karen, can I just ask you a question? Blah, 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 blah. Another person will be like, Karen. This person will be like, Karen. A woman that is old enough to be their mother. <laughs> nobody says ma. You know, nobody says ma, madam, prof. It does not exist. But I could honestly say that about 90% of them are okay because they help one as an individual to interact freely with people around you, people at work. You can imagine interacting freely with your lecturer. You know, it makes you to ask all the questions and all that stuff. They can also ask you for a drink. Do you mind coming to drink with me? Do you mind coming for a cup of tea? Do you mind coming for a quick cig? Because everybody smokes in this country. That's another point that I did not mention. Smoking is just like a lifestyle in this country. <sighs> oh my goodness. You look through your window, you see someone smoking at work. Your colleagues, they go out. If you are doing an eight-hour shift, you see your colleagues going out for like, let me not lie, 10 times before the world closes to have a quick seek. Here in this part of England, they call it a quick fag. In Manchester, it's a quick seek, you know, going out for a quick seek. But here is a quick fag. Mm. I'm learning every day. All right, guys. So that's it for all that I found shocking in this part of the world, the United Kingdom. Do not forget to subscribe to my channel. Also, leave your comments in the comment section and drop any topic you would like me to discuss in my next video and I will definitely give that a go. Thank you so much for stopping to watch. See you again in my next video. Bye-bye.